Hello, DJ's here. Or at least that's what I go by on Advanced Wars by Web and on Discord. So, recently I had the idea to create a YouTube channel. Uh, basically, as a way to teach new and old players how to improve their game in Advanced Wars by Web. Uh, just a little background about myself. Uh, I've played Advanced Wars for like 20 plus years. I remember my friend found an Advanced Wars 2 cartridge at recess in elementary school, and he played it and didn't like it. And he gave me the cartridge, and I love that game. Uh, so I've basically been playing Advanced Wars ever since for like 20 years. Um, currently, I'm about like top 10-ish on both the Standard and the Fog of War ladders. I don't play high funds. Uh, so I'm pretty qualified to teach about some of these tactics. Definitely room for improvement. And if I make mistakes in the game, I'll try to point them out. There's always room to improve. Um, so without further ado, uh, the focus of this video is going to be on transport. Both APCs and T-copters, I'm not going to really go into black boats or landers uh, for this video, but just how they're overlooked in a lot of games. Uh, we'll also be focusing on Fog of War maps. If you use transports in standard play, usually your opponent can counter that because they can see that you made it. Uh, you can easily, you know, build a recon if you see a uh, transport and shut it down basically. So we're just going to look at Fog of War matches this time. Alright, now let's get into the game. So this is the map, first step into Fog. Uh, pretty common map. I think it's still in the map rotation to this day. Um, normally in this map, I'm usually a, a recon type of person normally. Uh, early recon on the uh, left side if I'm on the top, or on the right side if I'm on the bottom, to harass these properties. However, recently I've watched some games uh, by Hogat and Go7. Both of them have really utilized the transport copter in this game to great effect. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate how much of a difference this can make in the game in terms of property capturing, uh, map control, etc. So the biggest, I just want to start off saying the biggest noob trap for this map is over focusing on the middle. Typically in Fog of War games, people like to make a death ball or whatever and just shove it in the middle and they're like, oh, I win now, right? That's not necessarily what happens in this map. See, there's only two contested properties in the center. Whereas on the sides you got these nice three juicy properties on each side. You also have these properties which are a bit vulnerable as well. So this is one of those games where you can't just uh, go at it without thinking about what you're doing. You need to know about the map first. And I've seen a lot of people just lose because they don't have the property advantage. They have map control in the center, like congrats. But they just don't have the income to match their opponent who controls the sides. Quick background on the map. My opponent here is... Uh, I think around 1100. That's not really important. I'm not really going to be focusing on him. Um, and basically, the strategy I'm going to be using the T copter build is one I took from Hogat and I took from Go7. So I did not originally create it. I think it's a vast improvement on my normal starts, which involve the recon. Um, so basically, my opponent starts off with a standard two infantry. I do two infantry. You know the standard stuff. Let's just skip to the. Everyone always goes to the middle base, etc. So first step here that's different. I go for this airport. Normally I go for here because it has a follow up. You can come here and get these two properties early. But I go for the airport for the early transport. Likewise, if you're on the top, you would go for this airport over here. It's not really intuitive, but it'll pay off in the end. So let me show you. He goes for the same. Blah, 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 blah. Now he goes for the airport. So it's my turn again. Just standard infantry stuff. Finish my cap at the airport. He does his own thing. Okay. So here, we bust out the T copter. Look at this. The T copter doesn't even leave the damn airport. Already paying off dividends. Look at this. Two turns. I'm on the front lines. I'm capping one of these side cities. Normally, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. four turns for that infantry to get there. Oh, but the T copter's already helping out. So, uh, do the normal infantry. I remember my opponent had a weird turn here. Yeah, he went for a uh, double arty with the base skip. No comment from me. Uh, so, on my way to get those side properties at this point. Do the do. Get in the transport. Bam! On the front lines already. Ready to capture any of these cities. Going to capture these... Already on the front line. I have three infantry already ready to cap. Look at him. He's got one over here. That's it. This guy's lost over here. He's so far behind in development so far. So another caveat here. For your follow-up, uh, there's a few options. So for one, you can make three infantry here, like I saw in the Hogat game. And next term, you build a B-copter at this airport over here. It's pretty good. 
No one has anti-air this early in the game, so you're pretty safe to get off a few uh, free hits from the B-copter. Me, I'm a tank guy. What can I say? I want to put some pressure on the sides. That's my goal right here. Take both sides, get some pressure going on. Uh, so for him, he does his little thing. I don't know. Not really paying too much attention here. So now, the T-copter. It's not done. You thought transporting that infantry over there, though. That's great and all. Look at this. Get on the city. Get in. Get the hell out. Boom. Ready to cap this. We're not wasting three infantry turns to get to this. We're doing it in two, man. We got the T-copter. And look. We got our little infantry going up there. We're already ahead 12,000 to 10,000. I haven't even had the big turn where I have these four, five caps. The tank goes over there, puts some pressure on the sides. Looking pretty damn good. I build an RD here. You can do whatever you want at this point. I build mechs. Another thing, the T-copter. It helps with the builds, man. But then, it's a mech ferry the rest of the game. You can send mechs out 3,000. You put them in a mountain over here, it's as good as a tank, let's be honest. Gives you great vision as well. Uh, mechs are key on this map, so that makes the T-copter even better. My opponent's turn again, he's scampering around. You know, oh, I'm gonna get the center now. Like, congratulations, you can have the center, man. You you can have the center. Hey, he's sending his infantry, he's doing his tank build, whatever. Then comes the great capping. One, two, three, four. Okay, maybe I didn't do it in that order. Oh, and I had one down here, that was six, man. Forget the five, it was six. We capping a lot of props. We capping a lot of props here. Uh. So we're at 8,000, we still have the 2,000 advantage. I'm controlling the sides. Man, he's late to the game here. I'm not letting that cap, Are you kidding me? Man, he's not even at the calm tower over here. We're just dominating in the capture game. It's not even close. I built a copter here. Like I said, you can choose your sides or whatever. Uh, I decided to go heavy on the right side over here. You know, typically in Fog of War matches, you want to go heavy on one side, lighter on the other. Uh, I'm using the left side as my capture side uh, with mech support. So he does his thing. He's, I'm going to get the middle. Rear. Congratulations. You can have the middle. He's at 16,000. He's going to be stuck around that for a while. Uh, I'm still capping, man. I'm not done. Not even touching this. Man, I'm about to cap both of them next turn. He's not even touching it. So uh, look at this. I go in the middle. So here's a mistake on my part. I got a little greedy. I'm like, you know, I got all the capture game in the world. I've stopped him from getting this. I'm probably going to stop him from getting those properties as well. Uh, in reality, I probably should have backed off there and stayed, and stayed in my lane. Got a little greedy. Happens. When you got the T-copter, you know, the arrogance just starts flooding. Uh, I was like, oh yeah, let's go, man. So I, I, I go in the middle. Uh, build a copter on the left side now. Tank. You know, I'm just going all out of the place. This is not my cleanest game. I'm basically going to show... I was just showing you the opening. I'm just going to skip through a bunch of the stuff. I made some stupid mistakes in the middle. You can have it, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. So, as you can see, I'm just dominating the capture game. I got 21,000 to 17,000. We're on turn 9. It's not pretty. It's really not pretty. I can't even get the calm tower. Like, I was getting a little greedy over here. Like I said, unclean. I'm just going to skip through a bunch of stuff. Uh... Stops my caps, but he's he's stuck around the 1800 for the most part, maybe 1900. Um, well, I have 22,000, and it adds up. Like I'm playing pretty terribly here. I'm just going out, out of control. My balls are at the wall. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I got the T-copter high. I'm losing units all over the place. I think I'm losing the KD ratio. Who cares, man? I've, I've, I'm getting 4,000, 3,000 more than him every single turn. He doesn't even have the calm tower. So, uh, as you can see. It's, it's not looking good for him. Uh, I'm just going to stop the game here. Uh, the rest of the game is irrelevant. I just want to show you that turn 11, he doesn't even have one of these so-called properties that are supposed to be his. I'm safe over here. He doesn't have that property. He doesn't have the calm tower. I let him have the middle and he still doesn't even have the front middle one. And the rest of the game, I basically have a 3000 plus lead over him. It's not even close. My, like I said, the KD ratio is favoring him. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. After five turns, I'm going to have 15k more funds than him. If not, even more than that. So, that just shows you how important the early capture game is, especially on this map.
Um, I just want to show a comparison for y'all. This uh, game is another comparison game. I built my early recon as usual. Beginning of eight, turn 8 right here, I got 14,000 in income. Well, let's compare to how I'm doing in the T-Copter game. 18,000, beginning of turn 8. 14,000, 18,000. Now, keep in mind, you will have some more pressure, but if they have a tank or something to respond to you, it's not really going to pay off. Uh, so I just wanted to show how much of a difference the T-Copter can make. That's $4,000 fund by turn 8. Uh, so yeah, use the all right, now we're being looking at the backbone of transport, and that is the APC. So this map is the static. Uh, this map is still in rotation for Global League, so this might be beneficial for y'all that follow Global League, uh, play Global League rather, uh, and you might even be able to use this build to win your game that you normally wouldn't win. So we're gonna be looking at APC builds. Uh, I'd like to thank Conbay and Go7 for helping out with the showcase. We'll be looking at two different APC builds, and we'll go into detail. So they start off the standard infantry build. Basically in this map you gotta blast your way out with the artillery, uh, for those who are familiar with the map. So start off with a normal infantry build, nothing special here, nothing special here. A lot of time after you cap this uh, property over here, or rather base, people build a tank or a recon. Uh, but in this case, we're gonna show you. So comp right here goes for the early APC on the side. That's one option. Uh, as we'll show you next turn. Uh, whereas Go does my favorite one, which is the APC at the bottom, or rather on the top if you're on the yellow team. So right here, we'll go to Conbay first. So he gets in his APC over here. Gets out here, boosts it. So already ready to go. From over here, already ready to cap next turn. Normally it takes two turns to get over here, We're already ready to cap, build another infantry in anticipation of using it next turn, and while for go, you have one of the infantry get in the APC over here, spits it out pretty close by, ready to cap this property over here, which normally takes three turns to get, one, two, three, one, two, three, so three turns to get to, now you're all ready to cap that, build another infantry, ready to go in that already. You can build a recon here, you can build whatever you want. Focusing on infantry here. Ready to cap over here, comp by gets that. Uh, won't focus on the bottom. Gets out of here. Spits it out here. Already ready to piggyback into this one over here. Ready to capture that just like Go did before the turn. So he's a bit ahead on the close properties capturing, whereas Go's will be ahead on the farther properties. If you actually look at the income advantage, they actually match equally. Uh, over the first few turns. So it's kind of, I personally prefer the farther property one because it, they're more contested later on in the game. Uh, these properties over here, whereas this one you secure the income lead earlier, but they're more safe properties. But both ones are much better than the actual tank builds. So, so we cap that property on here. Cap that property. So right here, normally I'm a little greedy. I'm a greedy boy. One, two, three, four, five. You can dump them off over here and they can be ready to cap this. Goes a little more patient than me. He's ready to cap the port over here or the city over here. And he lines that one up for the next turn. So, which is actually pretty smart. I think that's actually an improvement on my own. I'm just a greedy guy. Uh, whereas Conpe over here, he cap he's ready to capture this property over here. Uh, doing pretty good on the income. Yeah, they both are pretty patient with this, so he can grab the port next turn, whereas this one's loaded up, ready to go. Actually, yeah, and you can plop it right here. There you go. You can even plop the center property over here. So, they're both loaded. Like, if you had a tank at this point, instead of that other thing, your tank would be, like, over here, doing absolutely nothing. It's not stopping any caps, it's not doing anything. This map is too large for a tank to really do anything early game, so it really favors, I find that larger maps typically favor more APCs, uh, T-Copters, because you can get more space covered and the tanks aren't really a threat in the early game. Smaller maps, you're gonna get your ass whooped by an early tank. Um, but these larger maps, yeah, you have time to expand to build. Right here, gets the port, and then I love this one right here. Not on, the t uh, not on the property, but on the mountain. You can see all of these properties completely uncontested right now. Take your pick, man. You feeling juicy? You can go for this one. Feisty for this one. Wimpy? Go for this one. 
there's there's no wrong answer. You're getting a free property right there. Uh, Hardy doing fine in the center. It's not like you're ignoring the center when you do these side builds either. It's looking pretty good. Meanwhile, Kappa has got a pretty good build here. I personally probably would have gone for the middle one, but you know, to each his own. Uh, he's already capping this property right here soon. And then the APC, likewise, on the mountain. Recon has no idea what's even going on over here. Recon won't, see, unless he goes like right here, he'll have vision, but then he's got a tank to back it up. So you think, oh, you're vulnerable to a recon. Not really, I mean, the recon can suicide itself, but you have tank backup typically for this. And you're ready to take your lion's share over here too. So both these builds looking pretty damn good. Uh, I'm just gonna stop there because the rest of the game is, is irrelevant what happens. But I just imagine most times you're not even, you're like infantry up to here if you're not using an APC build. You don't even have the port in your sights yet. You're, you're flailing around these properties. You probably got like a little band over here of properties you own, but you're not even touching these for a while. Uh, and you're usually focusing on the middle. Here's another map with the middle's a little overrated. You got four properties over here, four over here. Then you got these little wimpy two over here that you usually fight over. Not really worth it. Uh, like I said, I think people think this death ball in the middle is always good. It's not necessarily always good. In this case, you need to be careful of an HQ cap. Uh, so you can't have absolutely nothing in the middle. Uh, but here is another game where the sides are pretty damn important. So basically the APC build will allow you to get to these properties two, three turns in advance with a massive income lead. Uh, not quite demonstrated in this game because the opponent is also using the APC build. Uh, but it, you will find great utility in using the APC build on this map. All right, guys, that basically sums it up. Uh, I hope you can use these tactics to win more points in the Global League. I know these maps are still in rotation, so they're still useful. Uh, if you have any comments in the video, this is my first video. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, if you have any tips, suggestions, etc., just let me know. Uh, mash that like button until your fingers bleed. I don't care. Mash it so hard that you like it and then it unlikes it. I don't care either. Uh, just let me know what you think, uh, ways I can improve, etc. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Hope to see you around.